Hi, I'm Priscilla and today I'll be bringing you through an overview of the Transport Impact Assessment, in short, the TIA. This is a list of content that we will be covering today, which will include classification types, the key aspects, analysis tools used, as well as some of the common challenges faced. First, let me bring you through an introduction of the TIA, which in general is an assessment of the impact to the surrounding road, traffic and transport network that a development or multiple developments can bring. The TIA was first introduced in the 20s as Traffic Impact Assessment and incorporated as one of the requirements for development control stage clearance in 2002. In 2017, it was officially renamed to Transport Impact Assessment and the focus now also includes walk cycle ride elements as Singapore moves towards being a car-like nation. A TIA is important as it not only serves to assess the traffic impact of the development on the surrounding network, but also help to achieve an optimal development design that addresses the transport and connectivity needs of the development. This is done through the added assessment of the different needs of the development and ensuring that sufficient infra is in place such as adequate sizing of the pickup drop-off as well as the internal and external connectivity and accessibility to public transport and pedestrian cycling network. The objective of the TIA is to allow for the early identification of the potential traffic issues in the area and to evaluate the impact of the development to the vicinity. This can allow us to put in place the necessary improvements to maintain smooth traffic operations, minimize the negative traffic impact, and ensure that the development and general traffic can continue to move with ease within the road network. The TIA should also help to ensure that the plan and design of the development caters for active mobility modes and connectivity to public transport in order to serve the proportion of development users that rely on public transportation and active mobility modes to assess the development. Usually for GLS developments, the need for a TIA is clearly stated within the TCOT or the land sale agreements. For projects where the need for TIA is not clearly stated, developers can refer to the Transport Impact Assessment Guidelines for development that can be found on the LTA website. However, developers are still encouraged to consult LTA on whether a TIA is required as a table within the guidelines only serves as a guide. Depending on the development attributes or traffic within the surrounding area, LTA may or may not call for a TIA regardless of the conditions specified within the guidelines. Also, do note that all TIA reports should be prepared by a professional transport consultant. Currently, there are three TIA classification types and the type of TIA is usually determined at the scoping meeting. Type 1 TIA is generally used for single development where the junctions, usually up to five junctions, are assessed individually. Type 2 TIA is generally used for district level, large or multi-use single development. The study area can go up to 12 junctions and they are assessed either individually or together with microsimulation. Type 3 TIA is generally used for regional or town level master plan and the study area usually goes beyond 12 junctions. Such TIA require high level and micro simulation assessment. Next, we will cover the key aspects of the TIA. A TIA comprises of five key components. The first component is the scope of the TIA. Typically, a scoping meeting will be arranged between LTA, consultants and developers to set the study objectives, methodology, requirements and deliverables. After the scoping meeting, the consultants would proceed to the second component, which is demand estimation. For this, the traffic consultants would proceed to collect the necessary data, such as traffic counts for the study junctions and trip rates from similar developments. With this data, they will then provide an estimate to determine the traffic demand and likely routes for the proposed development. After the demand estimates have been cleared with LTA, the consultants can then proceed to the assessment itself where they will develop the appropriate models for the study area identified and undertake scenario and sensitivity tests required. Through the analysis done, the consultants will then move to the fourth component, which is to make the recommendations necessary for the proposed development. The recommendations can be in the form of soft measures, such as traffic demand management measures, 
or hard measures such as the widening of junctions or sections of roads. Where necessary, a post-implementation review, which is the fifth component, may be included as a requirement to validate or understand the effectiveness of mitigation measures that are put in place. Other than the development's own traffic and transportation needs, the TIA will also need to consider the impact of the development to the general traffic, also known as background traffic, in the vicinity. Hence, the TIA will also need to demonstrate an understanding of the surrounding area, such as the existing traffic conditions, the mode share between private transport trips and public transport trips, the surrounding land users that may affect the traffic generated at certain time of day, as well as any other upcoming developments, transport infrastructure or improvements that may affect the future study scenario. Some of the data that is required under the demand estimation component are listed here and they include the traffic volume and distribution, traffic light timing, walk cycle ride mode share, travel time data and so on. Site surveys either through manual counts or video recordings are usually conducted to obtain the traffic volume and traffic light timings while interview surveys are used to determine the mode share. Traffic distribution data is usually obtained through vehicle plate matching surveys interview surveys or turn counts at site. Any other data that may be required and is specific to the study will be discussed at the scoping meeting. The TIA will also have a section that demonstrates how the development design can incorporate features or measures that would encourage more walk cycle ride trips, such as proper internal connections that would give direct accessibility to public transport nodes or park connectors. Consultants can also suggest measures or services that help reduce the private transport trips and encourage the use of public transport or non-motorised trips such as cycling. The TIA would also likely include the other assessment components such as the analysis of pickup drop-off design, parking provision for the proposed development, the design for the site access and internal circulation, for some large developments where significant construction traffic may be generated, a traffic management plan during construction may be required. A traffic operation plan would also be needed for some developments where there may be recurring events or surge in traffic at certain times such as mosques, churches or exhibition centres. Moving on, I will briefly touch on the analysis tools commonly used for TIA study. To assess the performance of traffic junctions or network in the study area, performance attributes are used as key indicators. They include the measure of traffic queue length and delay for approaches at junctions, the number of traffic light cycles needed to clear the queues, any spillage of traffic onto upstream or neighbouring junctions, as well as the traffic density in the road network. For a typical single development TIA that does not require micro simulation, single junction assessment is sufficient. CIDRA software is a commonly used and data collected and projected will be input into the software to derive the different performance attributes as listed previously. Proper calibration within the software is required to replicate existing conditions before any other scenario testing can be undertaken. For Type 2 and Type 3 TIA, they normally will require micro-simulation assessment as it provides a more detailed analysis that takes into consideration the driving behaviour and realistic vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle interactions. Micro-simulation also gives a more accurate analysis of the junction performance and provides visualisation of the extent of traffic issues at hand. For a significantly large study area, such as multiple developments or master plan study, high-level assessment that focuses mainly on road capacity and travel time in the network will be required. Unlike micro-simulation, assessment at this level does not show visualisation of vehicles moving within the network, but instead shows the demand in simplified coloured bars. This allows for quick scenario testing to determine the network traffic performance and identify areas where micro-simulation is required for more detailed assessment. Lastly, I will touch on the common challenges faced. While a TIA can identify the different problems and needs as well as proposed measures to mitigate, there are instances where there are site constraints, existing conditions or safety considerations that may impede the implementation of the measures. 
Some challenges include limited site frontage for location of transport nodes and assessors, as well as high development traffic demand with limited scope for improvements due to the presence of mature trees or canals that cannot be relocated. When such issues arise, the LTA will work together with the consultants and the developers to find the best possible solution to move things forward. In summary, my presentation today has covered an overview of what a TIA is, the different classification types of TIA, and the key components and assessment included within the TIA. I have also touched briefly on the different analysis tools as well as the common challenges faced. I hope that this has been helpful to you and for more detailed coverage on this, you can go to the LTA website and source for the full TIA guidelines as well as the TIA guidelines addendum. Thank you.